The talk and flee, the talk and flee by W.F. Marshall. I knowed a man in the mountains, and afore he dug the spuds, he courted a great big woman with sweets and cinnamon buds. The man was as thin as a hara. He could live in the latch of a door. The woman, the more she was sunsy, was lighting her foot in the floor. But the man knowed what he was doing when he courted Rosie McDean. For she was a useful woman with a powerful lap and a spade. She was grand with a grape and a mitten. She could run the legs off a foal. Oh, she was fit for a farmer in a place like Crocketone. It isn't chanty, Annie, please. No, you have to be quiet. <laughs> the man got married on Rosie and fetched her home in a car. He lit the lamp in the kitchen for the place was as black as tar. He went out for the father of the cattle, but boys, I say, I say, when he landed in from the buyer, Rosie was clean away. The man, by name he was Daniel, fell till and cried like a whale. He knew the fairies had Rosie, and how would he get her again? I declare the fool of a piggin wouldn't howl the tears he shed. And dismal it was for to see him creep to his lonely bed. But he wasn't long in the blankets till he feel the bite of a flea. He clapped his hand on his oxter and boys a say a say. But he catched the flea to kill it. He nearly died of the fright for it said, Now Don, excuse me, you're squeezing me too tight. Holy St. Patrick, what are you? Beast or Christian, says Dan. <laughs> well, indeed it says I'm a Christian. So please let me out of your hand. Sit up in the bed, you boy, and hop yourself in the rug, and open your thumb and your finger, and let me lighten your lug. <laughs> Dan sat up in the blankets, and boys, as say, as say, didn't know where he was sitting. He was trembling for fear of the flea. Come, come, it said, be manly. I'm kindly the more I'm we. Surely I'm not that scursome, an unsignified thing like me. I was turned to the flea by the fairies. The king himself done the job. Me, that was reared to be cleanly, and me, with rheumatics be gob. But the more I'm fatigued with a happen, so far in the dark and the rain, but come with an urn to tell you way to get Rosie again. Be me sound when he heard about Rosie. Dan pitched the blankets away. He bounced out of bed like a lion and boys I say I say, Mr. Sir, says he, your honour, if Rosie, me darling, be back the longest day that we're living, the devil a flay I will crack. <laughs> well, Daniel, that's more than decent. The critter says in his ear, but I'm coming straight from Rosie. She's living, she's well, and she's near. She's under a grassy mullen that rises in Carrageen bog, with a can of in bed to lie on, and eating the best of grog. <laughs> now, on Halla Eve night, the fairies, when the moon begins to shine, have a commons match at four mass, and they'll not leave her behind. She'll be coming with them riding on a colt as white as snow, and the fairies be to be dancing, so she'll have to travel slow. Now there's your chance, you boy. You. When they're dancing past the lane, be sure and reach for Rosie and pull your mate and main. Stick both your arms about her and lace them till the lock and howl her, Daniel Howler. Howler till twelve o'clock, but don't for God's sake name it to man or beast or bird. The fairies she said would kill her if they jobbed she had 
sent you word. That was all from the insect. But boys, I say, I say, wasn't Daniel glad to hear it? That nice discourse from the flea. Mister, sir, says he, you can tell her. I'll not say a word to a soul. And if I get a howl to Rosie, in truth, that howl I'll howl. And see now, if you would take it, I'll bestow you the half of the farm, but the full of your mouth for supper. You can have it here in my arm. Then the flay, with a feed in him, helped it. And Dan had a fortnight to wait, but I'll warn you, he was brave and early down the wee lane to the gate. And there on the stroke of eleven, his sonsy big rosy he seen, with fairies before and behind her, and her cocked up like a queen. Brave Dan made the clam for his rose, and that's what started the fun. You've never seen such a Hamlin since ere your day began. He lapped his arms about Rosie, he bundled her off the count, and every trick they could think of they tried, but he held his hout. Well, the fairies went raging around him, and the king of them gave a squeal, and turned her into a salmon, and then he turned her into a eel. He turned her into a greyhound. And he turned her into a duck. <laughs> no matter how he turned her, the hound was never broke. He turned her into a he turned her into a bonfire. And boy to say a say, it was hard for Dan to howl her, and her still blazing away. <laughs> but he locked his arms about her and cursed them hilt and hell. And the blessing of God was with him. He held his howl till twelve. And the minute the clock had struck it, the count began to jog. The writer he riz and hooked it back to Carrigine Bog. And Dan was left with his rosy. Oh, boys, I say, I say, he had something in that a zockster better now than a flay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the story of Rosie. The woman the fairies stole. And the story of Dan the farmer that lived in Crockett Hole. But here, if he kept his promise to that wee talking flay, the two of them had some scratching. Oh, boys, I